right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar with T-Mobile. We will give everyone a few minutes to log on and get connected with us today. Um, while we wait for folks to join, would love to see where everyone is tuning in from. If you feel comfortable, just dropping it in the chat. I'm coming to you live um, from Brooklyn. What about you, Claudia? Where are you coming from today? I am coming from Stackbridge, Michigan. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Los Angeles. It's snowing outside. The snow is coming down. Uh, it's about to start snowing here in New York any minute now, I think. So we'll see. Great people all over Maryland, New Jersey, Washington. Oh. Well, welcome everyone. We're so excited um, for you to be here and excited to learn more about T-Mobile for Business. Um, before we dive in into today, to today's conversation, um, few housekeeping things. First off, my name is Mary. I'm with Fairy Godboss. For those of you who don't know, um, Fairy Godboss is the largest career community for women. Um, and we provide a variety of free resources, including opportunities like today's event to connect with T-Mobile. Um, so we will be sharing the recording after afterward um, via email. So and you can revisit anytime by visiting the site. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or um, use your Q&A function. Um, you also have the ability to ask questions anonymously. Um, and uh, that's about it. That's all our housekeeping. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to our guests. We are very lucky to be joined today um, by, with Claudia Stokes. So Claudia has been in talent acquisition with T-Mobile for 10 years and counting. Um, she's currently a senior recruiter supporting T-Mobile's amazing business sales team. And her current focus is finding top talent for the SMB and enterprise sales teams, which she's gonna talk to us about today. Um, she works hard, but has a lot of fun in the process and was awarded one of T-Mobile's highest honors, the Peak Achievement Award in 2018 for her efforts. So before we turn it over to Claudia to dive into how amazing life is at T-Mobile and the exciting roles they're hiring for right now, we thought it would be fun to kick it off with a video to set the tone about what life at T-Mobile is like. So I am just gonna share my screen. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna hit play. And enjoy. What we're about is changing wireless for good. We are going to redefine a stupid, broken, arrogant industry. I think the young carrier works because it's so simple. List out every single thing that doesn't work and let's begin to fix it. We are the young carrier. It's not that complicated. We knew what she looked like and we were on that. You know that you're doing something good and that feels Amazing. Happy employee makes happy customers. We wanted to become customer-centric, experienced-obsessed, and a digital company. The company actually really cares about its employees and its customers. Pain point solved. That's our carrier. It's our brand. It's our culture. It's who we are. The overall culture of working here has just been phenomenal. This is like working for T-Mobile. It's a great experience. The people I work with is amazing. Everything about this company is positive. I have the most committed, brand loyal employees, top to bottom. Because there's trust and belief in what we built. The best part about my job, my management and my coworkers, everyone is included. Everyone has a part in the success of our business. That's the difference between our company and the others. Employees want to be part of something bigger. This was a company that I could be at. I met people who were on a quest to do something different in business. We're making business sense out of common sense. We're always like one or two steps ahead or more that I know of. <laughs> this story is all about people, all about it. We're strong, our brand is strong, we're growing tremendously. We're just going to keep knocking down pain points. These are the heroes in our company. We, we, we are the future. The future, the future, the future of wireless. And we won't stop. 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 I told you we won't stop, and I meant it. Awesome. I think that was a great 
great way to set the tone, Claudia, and get us super excited about learning more about T-Mobile. Um, while Claudia brings her screen up, I am going to drop in the chat um, a link to some of the roles um, T-Mobile is hiring for. So if you feel inspired, like I know you all will, please feel free to check it out at any time during the presentation. All right, awesome. All right, well, um, I am very happy to be here today to share a little bit about T-Mobile and the awesome opportunities we have open in our T-Mobile for Business space. So as, as uh, Mary already told you, I'm a senior recruiter supporting our business sales team. I've been with T-Mobile for 10 years. Uh, and as you can see from my picture, we do have a lot of fun. Um, that shot was actually taken um, when we arrived for the Peak Awards in Maui. Uh, and it was a week of uh, fabulous fun. And uh, honestly, we, we felt like we were, um, I don't know, movie stars or something. It was definitely a red carpet treatment from the whole experience. And that's just one of the many perks that, that uh, uh, T-Mobile provides for its folks. Um, we just watched the Uncarrier video, and so that should have given you a little uh, insight into why it's such an awesome place to build your career. Oops, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do that. So we're <laughs> I didn't mean to uh, uh, hang on one second here. I think I got a little goofed up. Uh, bear with me. Um, and so it kind of gives you a little idea of um, uh, what we say, how we play. Um, what you see up on your screen right now are our values, and they've been at the forefront of how we do our business. Um, this slide gives you an overview, but I remember when I flew, went to my very first interview with T-Mobile, and uh, it was the HR director uh, who was interviewing me. It was my second interview. And on that day, he had gotten his first badge with these, with these values on his badge. And I even asked him about it. I said, oh, can I get one of those? And he said, not unless you get hired. And so to this day, here's my key fob. And you can see there's my T-Mobile, um, hopefully you can see that, my T-Mobile tag. And on the opposite side of that is our values. And so uh, that's what I saw on him. And that's what I'm very proud to still carry around me with me today. And so there they are. Frontline is first because our customers are first. Results matter. Count on me to deliver. Be bold, think bold, make a difference, play to win and have fun, and do it the right way. And we do our best to live those values every day. Hmm. Let's see. Give me another second. I don't know why I'm having a goof up, but I am. Give me one more sec. All right. So. Since I joined the company, if you must know, <laughs> our, uh, our, we've more than tripled our customer base. And, and uh, we were, when I first joined, really, we were the thinking carrier with only 27 million customers in 2012. And now today we have over 100 million customers and we're still growing. Our churn or the rate of which people leave the company has been cut down in half. It's only uh, less than 1% of everybody that ever joins T-Mobile leaves. And uh, because our customers are happy, we have the most satisfied customers in the nation. Um, uh, it's um, really because what, what our customers have seen, um, what we offer and what we've chosen to invest in. And obviously, we've continued to grow. Many of you might have heard that we've been, um, you know, we've, we're going through a merger. Um, and it was completed in April. On April 1st, the Sprint brand um, was retired. In, uh, actually, the, the merger happened in April, on April 1st, after two and a half years, really. That's how long it went. And, um, and then on August 1st, they, we retired the Sprint brand, and um, we became the t new T-Mobile. Um, we changed CEOs, and Mike Siebert, who was uh, our first CEO, who started all, John Ledger, that's crazy guy you saw in the first video, he was, has been his right-hand man through the whole thing. So he stepped into the role and John retired. He still tweets us all the time, though, on, uh, on Twitter. Um, as I mentioned before, it's, a, it's an incredible, really incredible place to work. We're ranked number 42 on Fortune's list of top 100 companies to work for. 
and we're a best place to work for um, the military, military spouses, for LGBTQ, for um, diversity. It goes The list goes on and on. This screen only captures a short, um, you know, a small segment of what we are. But what we really are in a snapshot is ethical, diverse, and fun. T-Mobile for Business is the, is the segment that I currently support. Um, later on in the presentation, we'll chat about the roles that are open and I'm actively recruiting for. Um, but we have openings uh, in the business channel that consist of small business, medium business, enterprise business, which is 1,000 employees or more, or the public sector um, sales roles. We also have um, openings for sales implementation managers, sales engineers, sales trainers, and on and on. It's an amazing group of people that truly care about each other. And I thought right here, I'd talk a little, sometimes people think sales, sales roles are, um, I don't know. They sometimes will get a bad reputation, but ours is truly a caring group of people. And so I wanted to tell you a couple stories about the teams that I've worked with over the course of the past couple of years. Number one, they they uh, they sent me to the peak. You only go to peak award by nomination, and they recognized my hard work and and um, sent me there. But number two, um, during a, after a period of extremely long hours and hard work for a few months, um, I I this will just kind of tell you about the kind of people that they are. Um, I had some heart palpitations and some issues, and and my husband took me to the hospital. And I, they did some testing, everything turned out fine, but um, uh, I was there overnight. And by the time that I got home the next day from the hospital, uh, my T-Mobile for Business crew had sent me a beautiful bouquet of flowers and this whole doctor kit with um, uh, chicken soup in there, and tea and um, crackers, little cookies, everything that you want when you're not feeling great, along with a note telling me not to worry at all about work, just take good care of myself and that they were all thinking of me. And that arrived, you know, like within 24 hours of after I was in the hospital. So it was a pretty, pretty wonderful thing to see. It wasn't from HR, it wasn't from the company, but it was from the business sales teams themselves. And then another example of the caring spirit within our business team is one of our senior um, managers, John LaPriest, when he was originally going for his first role, manager, I interviewed him. And at the end of every... Um, at the end of every interview, I always ask uh, my candidates to give me one word that best describes them. Well, John's word was caring, and it was it's very odd. They'll say driven or passionate or those types of words are generally what people say, and but his was caring. And so it wasn't for another year and a half or so until I saw that in action. So we had um, John did get the manager role, and then went on to get promoted to senior manager role less than a year later. And he had, we were in Michigan, but he had all of the um, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio territory. We had a candidate that we made a offer to. Um, we loved him. He'd been through the um, process for um, probably three weeks, but been through back on all that. It was a Friday afternoon. I sent him his offer letter. His name was Dippin. And um, he said, great, I'm going to go over it with my wife over the weekend, and then I'll get back to you on Monday. Well, Monday came, and we hadn't heard anything, and so I sent him a note and said, hey, Dippin, how'd everything, you know, are, are you ready to accept? And he said um, that he was, it was a super busy day at work and that he would make sure to take care of it when he got home from work that night. That's Monday. Didn't hear from him at all Monday, which is just unlike him because he's been a wonderful candidate through the whole process. Didn't hear a thing. I emailed him the next day. I called and left a message, nothing. The manager um, called him and emailed him, nothing. That's, so that's Tuesday now. We, then we contact John, the senior manager. And we're thinking, what in the world? Why wouldn't somebody, you know, turn, why wouldn't somebody um, respond to my email or just let me know that they weren't interested in the role? It all seems so weird. And, and then the next day, John put together an email, um, and the first, this, when he copied um, Jeremy and I on it, and the first thing out of him was, dip in more than anything, I just want to make sure that you're okay. And 
it still tears me up when I think about it. We didn't really think about that, that something might have gone wrong with Dip and that something might have happened to him, that um, any of that sort of thing. But that was the first thing that the guy whose first word was caring um, thought of in the thing. And he went on to say, we, we were looking forward to having you. If something's happened, please let us know, blah, blah, blah. Well, he didn't hear anything all day. He sent that at 8 a.m. in the morning. At 8, 8, 8 p.m., Dippin's wife called called John and let him know that uh, Dippin had been on a serious car accident on the way home from work on Monday and was in the hospital in critical condition, and so he, he, he wasn't able to accept the position. Dippin is fine. <laughs> He went. He didn't. He didn't come to T-Mobile at that time, which has been about a year and a half ago. Um, but um, because of you know recuperation, all that sort of thing, it wasn't the time to change a job. But he's fine today. And I heard from him, which is so weird that this happened. But I heard from him two weeks ago, and he's ready. And there's a new position open that would be a match for him. And so he's back in the process to come to T-Mobile again. So that's just one story of how the types of people that you go to work for at T-Mobile. Um, and so I think probably all of you know, if you've been watching any commercials or seen us on TV, that, that we, um, it's been an uncarrier revolution. And it's, the whole way that we've changed the industry is really it stemmed um, from two major themes, our signature moves and our network expansion. So when you look at this, you can see um, our 15 signature moves here, and they're all addressed customer pain points that customers cried out about that they wanted help with, that they wanted the, you know, contracts, all that sort of thing. Um, and so these are all things that, that T-Mobile has done along the way to change the industry. Nearly all of these moves have been copied by the other major carriers, um, even if they're knockoffs of what we've done. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's led to unprecedented success. We're growing and growing. As a matter of fact, the T-Mobile for Business segment is the fastest growing segment in the company. We're expanding our territories and plan to add 800 new sales roles or sales-related roles um, in 2021, which is one of the reasons why I'm here with you today. Um, and, and then in our, with our merger with Sprint, we've announced our first uncarrier moves with the new T-Mobile. And they're things that really have impacted, um, you know, the world for a better place. One is Connecting Heroes, um, which is a 10-year commitment for free 5G um, service uh, and access to every first responder, every public and nonprofit state and local police, fire, and EMS agency across the company, across the country. And Project 10 Million, which is near and dear to my heart, which is our $10 billion commitment to um, – eradicate the um, homework gap for millions of children by giving free service to 10 million households. So it's all pretty cool. Um, and they all of the moves came about from listening to the customers and caring about them. Um, so T-Mobile really has changed the wireless industry for good. Um, when you take a look at this slide, you can just kind of see the type of culture and focus on diversity and inclusion that has continued to grow over the years from 2012 to where we are in 2020 today. Um, the diversity and inclusion um, initiatives just keep coming. Um, our, our, our employee groups keep growing and the, the things that, that we do to help our communities um, continues to grow too. Um, it's a wonderful, fun culture where people care about each other. Um, you can be yourself, um, and it's at the heart of everything that we do. Um, so this is really kind of our, our CEO statement on diversity and inclusion, and, and talking about the commitment. Um, I'm just going to read Mike Sievert's um, quote because I think it's important. Our long-standing commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion started as a grassroots employee movement that has grown to be an integral part of our culture. We are a strong company and can better serve our customers when we bring together the unique talents, backgrounds, and perspectives of every person on the team. Um, you know, there is so much focus on um, 
diversity of thought, color, background, whatever, whatever, whatever you have to say, we support it. And I wanted, you know, since this is a group of um, focus mainly on the uh, career advancement of women, I wanted to share with you a couple different stories of, of two women that I know who have been able to, uh, who T-Mail has really helped change their lives and build their careers. The first one is my daughter, Lauren. She, um, the first, she, she graduated from college with a degree in, uh, com what was it, criminal justice. Um, wasn't a whole lot of criminal justice roles out there. I was at T-Mobile. She was a manager in a um, family-owned um, restaurant chain in the town that she lived in, which is about an hour or so from where I lived at the time. And I kept saying, come to T-Mobile, come to T-Mobile. She didn't have benefits. Um, she probably made total working, I don't know, 80 hours a week. She probably made $30,000 a year. She didn't have any benefits. I knew she wanted to have a family. Uh, and I finally convinced her to come uh, to T-Mobile. And she interviewed. Well, I convinced her to, um, <laughs> I convinced her to interview anyway. And she interviewed for a part-time seasonal role at Christmas time and was hired into one of the mall stores. So once she started in, she fell in love with it. Um, and, and she started at $10 an hour that first year, um, worked both jobs, and then felt they, they offered her a part-time position at T-Mobile. And she took that, left the restaurant, um, and really her success has never stopped since then. That, that first year, she ended up as a part-time employee, um, winning work, Winter Circle and a trip to Hollywood, got to meet with the CEO of the company, earned working part-time over $50,000 a year. The amount of money that people make in the stores is really uh, amazing. I think people kind of have a um, something in their mind, I think, of, of what a person working in a, in a retail location makes. Um, but in real life, they make wonderful money. And uh, um, like I said, working part-time, she made over $50,000 and won that winter circle. Then was granted um, full-time, got in our career development program, got promoted to RAM. Um, at the same time, she got pregnant. Um, she had fertility issues. Our benefits were so wonderful that um, T-Mobile really paid for everything that 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 uh, all, there was a whole lot of things that went on, but T-Mobile covered all that stuff with the fertility stuff, and she was able to um, conceive and have my wonderful grandson, Ben, and um, then got promoted, uh, I think, six months later as a new mom to the highest volume store in, in her market and was making, I think at that time, probably over $80,000. She, she since then she's gone on to have another baby Emma and um, and uh, has opened a brand new store at a brand new market has merged in um, with the Sprint store in that market now they've come moved into her store and now they're the largest volume store in the whole state of Michigan so she still says that she T-Mobile changed her life and um, she loves every minute of it um, so that's one personal story, and then the other story is um, of of one of our man, about one of our senior managers. When I first met her, I was a recruiter in the office. I was focused on on the retail side of things at that time. She was in the business sales. She was an account executive. Um, always wonderful, outgoing, um, you know, warm, engaging. First, she got promoted to senior account executive. Then she interviewed for. And that, that was in Michigan. Then she interviewed and got her first manager role, um, and she had to pick up and move to Indianapolis for that. Or um, not Indianapolis. Yep, I guess it was. It was Indianapolis that she had to um, move to. She got her own sales team. She got um, went to school for T-Mobile, which paid for it all, got her MBA during that year and a half as manager, got selected for the leadership development program, and a year and a half later she got promoted to senior manager of the enterprise space, which is even a larger segment of the T-Mobile for Business. Um, and then during the merger, and, oh, and she had to move to Ohio for that. I think it was Cincinnati or Columbus somewhere for that. And then with the merger, 
and the ter way territory changed, she was able to come back to Michigan, be by her family, and she's um, leading a very successful team. So I just wanted to share a couple of those stories. Um, these are some of the um, employee resource groups. Um, you know, the, all the, they're really and truly the lifeblood of, 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 of T-Mobile. Um, there's over 30,000 active employees and still growing amongst these. Um, and they're all committed to connecting with each other, supporting each other, and raising awareness. Um, and really, we couldn't be prouder of, of what everybody's achieved. So there's an accessibility community at T-Mobile, there's a multicultural alliance, there's a multi-generational network, there's a pride group, there's a veterans and allies network, and there's a women's and allies um, network. And speaking of grassroots, um, as part of the diversity and inclusion team, about five years ago in Michigan, we started our own grassroots campaign to, to um, reach out to our communities. And um, it turns out, that uh, T-Mobile um, gives us all kinds of money to support the, the, the organizations that we care about, nonprofits that we care about in, in our world. And the, when we found out that we could get $5,000 grants to help support these, we got together and we started doing um, events as, as a team. And the first year that we did it, we got $35,000 in grants from T-Mobile to support our organizations that we love, like Family Promise, which helps um, young women, um, usually mothers, um, land their first, their first place, helps them with job placement, puts them in their own trailer home once they're on their feet and um, have a, a job and are able to support themselves. They turn over the, the title of the um, trailer home to, to of the mobile home to the, the mom. And um, when when she's a oh, I'm sorry that somebody's clicking in. When she's able to, she's able to sell that um, mobile home and use from that to um, at, at towards her down payment on her next home. We we got to do great events with them. We did please and thank you, which we made blankets to go to kids in the hospital that had cancer, that sort of thing. Um, we've done all kinds of stuff with different organizations that support children. Um, that first year we raised thirty-five thousand dollars. The second year we raised eighty-five thousand because we found out that T-Mobile will give every employment employee up to two of those five thousand dollar grants a year. Um, and so each each person each place you support will get you can get up to ten thousand dollars for there. So now we're up over a hundred thousand dollars a year in grants that we get to support the folks, and it's it's something you can be very very proud of. Um, this slide really speaks for itself. Our strength is in um, who our people are. And it, can you hear me okay, Mary? Yep, you're all good. Okay, okay I don't know what that sound was, but 50% um, uh, of our workforce are people of color, 48% are people of color managers, 21% people of color executives. 41% women, 36% women managers, and 31% women executives. And then um, our benefits, and I think this is just about my last slide. Our benefits, I just wanted to talk briefly about that, another wonderful reason to come to T-Mobile, but they're crazy good. I mentioned earlier the uh, assistance that T-Mobile gave my daughter um, around fertility. Um, but there are so many other stories um, of how T-Mobile has helped. Uh, one of my DM friends recently adopted his son, and T-Mobile covered the entire thing. One of his people um, needed a surrogate family to have a baby, and T-Mobile covered all of that as well. T-Mobile provides totally free college education, your bachelor's, your master's, your MBA, all, even PhD, at nine different universities online, including Purdue and the University of Arizona. There's Live Magenta is an awesome program. It provides mental health support, counseling, coaching, you name it, T-Mobile's there to help. Uh, in addition, um, we, you know, uh, we have great pay and benefits. 
Um, but we're also giving yearly staff grants. So depending on your level depends on how much how many how much staff you get every year. But you're every year you get a new staff grant and um, uh, it it it's a beautiful it's free money. It makes us you know, we become part of the company and it, it's a great feeling. We also get seventy five percent discount on our phone service and we have an employee stock purchase program which is word world class. So you can put up to 15% of your salary into your stock purchase program. And um, it, you put it in over a period of six months. And wh whatever the stock price is, at, whichever one's lower at the beginning of the six months or the end of the six months, we buy the stock for 15% less than the lowest price. So we always make at least 15% on our money, which has been a great thing for me. <laughs> And then, um, you know, most importantly, I think you probably gathered that from my presentation, we do things the right way for our customers, for our employees, and for each other. And you can really be your authentic self at T-Mobile. And this video that I'm hoping um, I can play for you um, captures that. If not, I hope you will um, watch it in the replay. I, I think she'll post it in the replay, but I'm going to give it a whirl and see if it, if, if, uh, if it plays for you. Yeah, we can always share it afterward, Claudia, if for whatever yeah. reason, the internet is not on our side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, it is, uh, it, it, it's a hit or miss kind of a thing. Are you with us? It's about putting uh, our values out there. And it's the notion that we are an inclusive organization and that we want people to join this Ontario movement. Everybody's created equal. Whatever you want to be, we've got a place for you. You don't see that other places. For the first time, like I'm at a place. <laughs> well, you're getting the gist of it. Yeah, we can definitely share it. Um, and follow up, Claudia, because I think these videos are such a great way um, to see the spirit at T-Mobile. It really, it, it, they, they really, really, well, and truly are. Who I am as a female, as a black woman, as a mother, as oh. someone who is part of the LGBTQ community. I just don't. Well, hopefully, you get the, you get the. Oh, here we go. Claudia, it was so um, awesome to learn more about T-Mobile. It sounds like there's an incredible culture, incredible benefits, um, and really appreciate you sharing the stories and successes of so many of your colleagues. Um, so we want to mm -hmm. open it up to questions, so please feel free to use the Q&A. Um, we've already gotten a few in. Um, so let's uh, start off with this one. Um, so when you're hiring Claudia, what are some of the characteristics Chemoful identifies and associates with as the strongest team members of non-technical teams specifically? What was that? Can you repeat that one more time, Mary? Yeah, so like what are some of the characteristics that T-Mobile identifies with as their strongest team members on non-technical teams, so on your sales teams or analytics teams? Oh, well, I would say really and truly what we look for for people that are um, 
have a pos positivity, <laughs> number one, that are hardworking, that like to connect, that want to, I, I always say, I do still look for kindness, but I, I want somebody that's hardworking, that cares about the job that they do and the people that they work with, that wants to make a positive difference, um, that is driven, that is self-driven and self-motivated. In the sales role, um, you have to have thick skin because of the fact that you get a lot of no's. I mean, they do a lot of cold calling. So, you know, for the most part, not everybody is, 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 wants to hear a sales call on the phone. And so you, you just have to realize that, that it's all part of the deal, that it, eventually you'll get a yes. But that's hard on people. So it takes, a, it takes a thick skin. It takes somebody that's organized and dedicated, smart, and um, hardworking. I think that's what I look for mainly. And that ability to connect with people quickly in the sales role. You've got to have that, you know, you've got to want to connect with folks. Um, and enjoy that in the sales role for sure. Absolutely. Um, great. So um, two questions that are somewhat similar, um, but one of our viewers would like to know, um, they're interested in your early career and leadership development programs. Can you talk a little bit about those and where those opportunities are based? Well, they're based all over the country. I don't have the slide up, but I do. Sean Lynette, Lynette L-Y-N-O-T-T, -T, which you can reach out to him on LinkedIn. Sean, you spell his first name, S-E-A-N. Uh, he provided some of the information for me today for my presentation. But there is, you know, they are even doing the internships um, virtually this year because of COVID-19. And so um, they're scattered throughout the country and, and across many of our different roles. So I would say, rather than me tell you what the different opportunities are, I would say it'd be great for you to connect with Sean um, on LinkedIn. You could tell him that you attended the, uh, he knows I'm doing this presentation today, so tell, tell him uh, you attended the Fairy God bus, bus and wanted to find out more. That's awesome and great advice. I always try to tell people not to be shy about reaching out to people to find out more information. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So you mentioned a little bit about COVID and, um, you know, the program being remote right now. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit more generally about what work-life balance is like um, at T-Mobile? Well, uh, my work-life balance hasn't been so great lately, but uh, in general, I definitely think general, we're all struggling with that. <laughs> in general, um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's been a tough time for everybody, but I have to tell you, T-Mobile has uh, made it as wonderful as possible. Um, you know, like for our care centers, everybody got shipped all their equipment to their houses or where networks were set up so they could still, um, you know, work remotely from home. Uh, no one needs to really go back into the office until June. That's what it's extended for us until June of this year. We're one of the few uh, organizations in the country who have continued. No layoffs have happened due to COVID. No, everybody has kept their money, their full pay. Um, we're continuing to grow and hire, um, and, and people are flocking. I mean, it's just when you talk about taking care of your people, it's what T-Mobile does. So just kind of rolling with the flow. So instead of um, people going out to meet their clients in, in terms of sales, everything's on, we do WebEx for the most part. So, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their meetings virtually and, and we've all gotten adjusted to it. Dogs barking, kids crying, whatever the case may be. Um, T-Mobile has been super supportive of it. And like I said, with that um, uh, Live Magenta, there's, there's help available through that as well. Um, and if you have to care for a sick person or get sick yourself, you're, you're fully paid out. You don't even have to take vacation time. You get two weeks off paid, no questions asked. I mean, it's pretty wonderful. Yeah, that sounds amazing, especially right now when everything can feel so uncertain. It's great to hear that T-Mobile is, is really there and supporting their workforce. It's great to hear. Um, so, um, you know, you work with the sales enterprise team and, and mm -hmm. um, T-Mobile for business. So what viewer would like to know when you're um, hiring for leadership or management in those roles, what does that kind of mm -hmm. look like of what you're looking for? And what do those roles look like at T-Mobile? 
Well, uh, you know, when we're hiring for a manager role, we want a leader, obviously, that cares about their people. So one of the things that I look for is somebody that's self-aware, that is, uh, you know, knowledgeable about where their strengths and where their weaknesses are and and um, is open and honest with his people or her people about that. Um, I always think one of their, pro when I'm interviewing them, really, when I ask them what their proudest account, which I do ask them, what's been their proudest accomplishment in their career so far, I want them it to be about their people, not some award they've won or, you know, revenue that they've crushed or any of that. What I look for is that person that's most proud of those people that they've developed. Um, and so what we're looking for is people that will help other people grow their careers. That's what I look for in the manager role and senior manager. It's always about your people. That's where it all starts with that T-Mobile. And that is really lived in the everyday values of the world, honestly. Yeah, I Which love that. Which you can probably tell <laughs> when I say that. <laughs> I have a, personally have a wonderful boss. He was, you know, I've seen him grow. Um, when he first joined the, the um, when he first joined T-Mobile, he was a sorcerer. Uh, so he just was out there looking and connecting for people to for executive roles. Uh, he worked remotely out of Chicago, and and that was his main job to go on LinkedIn and and find executives um, that were you know open to coming to T-Mobile. And this was probably ten, maybe eight years ago. And then he got promoted to manager. Um, uh, the position he had to be in Chicago. He got that role, and he um, embraced it and got a, you know, promoted again to senior manager. And then um, we were in one segment, then we moved over to another segment, and then most recently he just got promoted to director and um, is doing a beautiful job. He's a, you know, he's young, 38, and what he's done is. Um, He's made a positive impact on my life and all the people that, you know, have worked under him. He's a shining example. Yeah, it does. It sounds like a great place to grow your career. And I love yep. the emphasis on, on caring, which you've talked a lot about that T-Mobile really right. cares, um, which is so important. Um, yep. So kind of in a similar note, since you work so closely, you know, with the sales teams, can you just give at a high level what a typical career path might look like for a person in sales? Absolutely. So there's a couple different avenues, depending on your skill set and how much experience you have that you can come in. So right now, we've just opened a whole new team of, of folks that are um, like their appointment setter. So you could actually start in a call center, you know, trying to set appointments for an account executive. Um, so that's a whole, and you don't really have to have any experience to start in that role. Um, and then where the roles that I generally start with are the town executive at the, um, at the small business level. So that we're looking for somebody um, probably with one to two years of experience in sales that, that don't mind cold calling and engaging with people. Um, the next step for them in their career is either senior account executive. Um, which is jet, which they can promote to that within six months. And that is just somebody that's killing it on their metrics, um, really, really thriving in the atmosphere and, um, you know, having a lot of positive results. From there, they can go into the manager of small business or they can go into the enterprise account executive. So small business is um, the AE, the the first step is usually um, they're targeting companies with 10 to 500 employees. The um, major account executive or senior account executive targets um, companies with 500 to 1,000 employees. And then the enterprise space, which they can move into next, um, targets companies with over 1,000 employees. From there, they can move into the senior manager role in the enterprise space. They can move into the government segment. They can also move from SMB. To the government seg segment, and um, and then really up the chain from there. Not only that, they're strategic. They can move into the strategic set segment, which is more of the planning and operations. There's um, I've also had te really technical AEs move into the sales engineer role, where they're more focused on the technical. They're called in as the technical advisors as part of the sales team during the process. So um, there's that. Um, 
there's a sales implementation manager role, which is a coveted role. I had one, so I, this is an interesting story. We had a store manager who really wanted to be an account executive. Um, he was given the shot as an account executive and he, it, it didn't work. Um, the cold calling wasn't for him. It wasn't just the right fit for him personally. He had to take a step back and go into the, back into the store as an assistant manager, but he was able to rebuild his career back up to a, um, to a store manager, won the Peak Achieve, Achievement Award in that role, and then landed, um, landed a sales implementation manager, which is the perfect mesh for him. Um, of, so he's not having to do the cold calling that it's already, you know, the account's already been sold and he just gets to connect and help with all the implementation and um, just be a wonderful asset to the team. So there's all different types of avenues that you can go across. You know, we have a lot of people move from retail into the business space as well. That's great. Um, I love that there are so many options and different career paths you could take. Um, yes, and if you are re relocatable, you're, the sky's the limit. That's the thing, single thing that holds people back the most is that they just need to stay in that one spot. I mean, you can go, now we have a headquarters in, um, in Seattle. We have a headquarters in Kansas City. We have a big hub in New York. We have a big hub in um, Texas. So, you know, it's all over the country. And then all the major cities have internships and early and careers programs available. That's awesome. So it sounds like, you know, nationwide, you could, you could find a good fit at T-Mobile, hopefully. Um, you can. Um, awesome. Um, so this is a good question. So one of our viewers would like to know what, what's the typical timetable um, through the job application process from like interviewing to being extended an offer? For in my world, you mean? Yeah. I would say, to, I'd say from your time of application to hire a month. So the longest wait time is usually from the time you apply to a time you get called for the, for an interview. So if that, that's, and, and, and if you have that first interview, like for me, so what happens is you apply in, in the SMB world, if you're interested in the sales world and you apply, you have to take an assessment. That takes about 45, I'm just going to give you kind of a few tips if you want to apply for the county executive role. You have to go in, apply, and take the assessment. It takes about 40 minutes to take, and it's important because if you don't pass the assessment, you don't move forward in the process. So if you do apply, make sure you take your time and do it in a quiet, thoughtful space. So once you've applied, take it and pass the assessment. I review all those resumes in the queue. Um, I, I do the screen on the candidates um, that look like they're a good match. Uh, and then, um, and now I'm doing them all via video. So we do WebExes and so I can see you in real life, see how you're connected because now everybody has to connect um, virtually. There's no going into the office, no going out to meet the customers. So um, um, that's, that's important. And then, um, you get a, uh, an interview with a hiring manager. We usually start with that. That goes well. Then you do a, a panel interview either with one of their peers or two of their peers. If that goes well, you do a final interview with the senior manager and then um, background check and hire. In a really great world, the whole thing takes two weeks when, when everything's flowing. If I love your resume, call you. I've, I've gotten it all done before in, in, in seven days, actually. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> so, if I fall in love with you during the interview, then you're then then it's a, then then it goes even faster. <laughs> so and I do have a tendency to fall in love with my candidate. Just, <laughs> uh, we just I just had this one woman um, who's who's in, her, in the interview process that you know she just lit up the screen and you know she just exuded positivity and you get. You know, when you get somebody like that, it's, a, it's very exciting. It's wonderful. And that's what I get my joy from is getting to make that positive, you know, that connection and that positive difference in somebody's career. Absolutely. Um, so kind of in a similar spirit, 
when someone is applying, do you have any tips or key things you're looking for um, for a candidate to really stand out? Yes. So when you're putting together, if, in any, any role that you're going for, we like to see metrics. We like to see numbers. We like to see what you've accomplished, um, whether or not that was, you know, you, in, in my situation, I want to know um, if you overachieved against your quota, your sales quota. Um, any awards, um, any career progression, we'd like to see that. Um, but, but make sure that you, that your top, that resume is what you have to sell yourself. Make sure that it's clean, no mistakes, easy to read. I'm okay with two pages. I don't, I don't really necessarily adhere to the one page rule. Um, but make sure that what, don't reverse your order like when you're making your resume, make sure that the most recent is on top and that your accomplishments are called out, like within the first little bit that you see the resume. I want to see that, like, oh, wow, that's what I want to see. Because all the people applying for the jobs and you're looking at that thing on the screen and it, you really are only getting a 20-second shot at looking at that snapshot. And it has to have something for me to say, oh, I want to take a deeper look at that person. Yeah, that's great advice. Help? Yeah, I think that's really valuable advice. Um, and you're so right. It's, you know, you have to grab people's attention and metrics are a great way to do that, especially in a sales role. Mm -hmm. um, so we have time for a few more questions. So if you have any linger question, lingering questions, please um, submit them now. We'll try to get um, to as many as possible. Um, if you are interested in connecting with Claudia as well, um, we have um, the link to her LinkedIn profile on the event page and we can also include it in follow up. Um, and so um, that being said, um, another user would like to know um, what about cover letters? Are you looking at those for these roles or is it really that resume? Just a resume because of the fact that you all play into a, a, this ATS system. Unless your cover letter is connected to your resume, I won't see the cover letter. That's a really so, good Yeah. Yeah. But a really nice opening paragraph at the top of your um, resume is nice. Okay. Um, that is a good attention to. And then during the interview process, it's usually about a 30 minute interview and you know, you, you should have your story down, um, you know, uh, like an elevator pitch of your career capsule of where you've been. So when I, in that first five minutes, you're telling me your career story and what it is about T-Mobile that excites you. So you should have, no matter where you're applying, you should have done your research and made sure that you know, um, you know, you, should, you, you shouldn't apply if you don't know that we just went through a merger if you don't know a few of the things, if you haven't looked at my LinkedIn profile, whoever's interviewing you, you should have at least checked out their LinkedIn profile before you ever got on because it's a connector. And not everybody, I, I mean, not everybody is super engaging. Some people are more, um, can be stern in the interview process or more, um, not quite as open as I am. But the, so you need to find something to be able to connect pretty quickly with that person without being salesy. Um, with, you know, just have a general interest. Uh, and then um, you should know what your strengths are. You should also know where your opportunities are. I, the best, this is the best question that I ask. I ask everybody, what's been, and it's a good thing for you to think about, what's been the best constructive criticism or critical feedback you've been given in your career that's helped you grow professionally? And wow. the answer to I that, love. good. The answer to that question Tells me how self-aware a person is, how willing they're open up, willing to be open, uh, and that 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 can make or break the whole interview. For sure, that's yeah. really great advice. Um, and something I will think about too, because I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. So I need to think about that. Um, all right, so we are almost out of time. So um, wrapping up, I would just love to conclude with. What is your favorite thing? We've talked about so many great things at T-Mobile. What is your favorite thing about working there? Oh, geez. Hmm. 
you talk about so many great things. I imagine it's hard to, to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the people, the people that I work with and for, and uh, that's it. I think that's why you really stay. No matter how great the company is, um, it's the people that you work with that make a difference. And I've, I've worked there long enough to be connected, uh, you know, amongst many different channels and fortunate enough to work with so many great leaders. And my favorite thing is, is that I get to make a positive difference. You know, I, I get to, I hopefully help somebody along their career path. Yeah, that's great. I think the people is key. We spend so much of our time at work. You want to like the people you're working with. Um, okay. Well, that is it for today. Um, thank you, Claudia. And thank you to Team you're Mobile um, for partnering with us on this. I know I personally learned a lot and it was great to learn more about Team mobile and the career opportunities there. Um, we will be sending out the recording of this, how you can connect with Claudia and you can learn more about T-Mobile um, later this afternoon. So stay tuned to your inboxes um, and thank you all again for joining us. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.